Well, hello, this is a screen recording on the use of uh, Google Groups, which is a free service offered by Google to um, set up email list serves, I suppose. Uh, email groups, email lists, what are they you otherwise called? Um, pretty much that, but basically it's a, a way to set up a single email account so that m many people can communicate to many people. So um, I'd receive an email from the group, it might be uh, you know my group name at googlegroups.com, uh, and me and everyone else in that group would just receive an email from somebody and then we can just reply to that email address and everybody else in the group will see that reply too. Uh, and of course all of the communication in that group is archived on the web page that Google offers you for, to um, manage the site. So anyway, what I've already done is I've logged into Google Groups and as a manager I've um, invited myself um, as another email account, my work email account, and it's uh, you have two options when you set in, and we'll have a look at that. Um, you can set, you can just add people to the group, or you can send invites. In this case, I've sent an invite, so I'll open that, and the message comes through here. Lee Blackall, Lee Blackall at gmail.com has invited you to a Targo sustainability group with this message, and there'd be a personal message there. Here is the group's description, and then the details below Google Groups information. You can accept this invitation by clicking the following URL. Access to the group on the web requires a Google account. If you don't have a Google account set up, you'll first need to create an account before you can access the group you can create an account at. Now, I'm faced with a decision. Do I already have a Google account or and therefore can I just accept the invitation or do I have a Google account already or I don't have a Google account and I'll need to set one up? might set one up first. Um, this is where a lot of people, including myself right now, may become unstuck because I'm not sure if I've set up a Google account with my work address before. I certainly have a Google account with my, my um, personal address, but not my work one, so what is he? It's not Lee Blackwell, it's Lee B. And there. Uh, That little skew if word there is something to stop computers setting up accounts for advertising purposes. Uh, only humans can see that because it's actually an image um, with showing letters, and so we have to type in the letters, and that tells Google that we're not a machine. Okay, I accept and create my account. Fingers crossed that that works out. Use the email. Ex uh, okay, so I have set up an account before. Uh, in that case, I've got to remember my password. So there's the problem. If you've already set up an account and you forget your password, there you've got a problem, which I've just done now. But I've got a sneaky suspicion I've used another password. So I'll go back to the original email and I'll try and accept the invitation. So I've clicked the link that accepts the invitation, and anyway, it's just popped up. Lee B. Take a tag. I see you have successfully joined the uh, the group, the Otago Sustainability Group. So I guess because I've already set up an account, Google recognizes the email address, recognizes the account, and I don't have to go any further from there. Let's visit the group's homepage. And here is how it looks. Recent discussions, two out of five messages are displaying, and files have been uploaded to the archive as well, a single file anyway. Over here it says, there are currently 10 members, the activity is low, English is the language, and the group is not categorized as yet. And we can go in and look at more at these pages and files. And about this group, let's have a look at that. Ten members, description, language, access. Anybody can view group content. Anybody, only members can view group members list. Anyone can join. Members can create and edit pages. Members can upload files. Only members can post. The group email is otago-sustainability um, at, at googlegroups.com, etc. Um, it does deliver RSS feeds if you're using that to keep track of the communications going on in there and it has an archive by months. Now all of those access settings can be changed so that only members of the group can see the content and only members of the group can see the members of the list, uh, the list of members and stuff like that. 
so we can set it to be a private group. By default, I put it to uh, open um, unless anyone has issue with that, and um, then we can close it, of course. Another drawback of being open is that it does open itself to spam advertising a little. Uh, there are strategies to stop spam coming through. We might just have a look at that too. I'm going to sign in with my managers. Account. We'll see what it looks like from a manager's point of view. Okay, we'll go to the group settings. You can edit my membership. We'll go to group settings. And what I've generally done is, um, as I said before, I've made the group open by clicking the access tab here. And you can check those to make it more closed. The appearance, you can change it from its standard appearance that it is now. You can choose another template and even add a, a logo in. Uh, change the uh, navigation of the, um, the order in which things are displayed in the group's website change email delivery types. This is the pref uh, prefix, so every email that comes to members in the group will be prefixed in the subject line with Otago Sustainability, one word. And then there's a custom, you can make a custom footer or the default footer which just has the link to the group's email page and how to control your membership and your settings. Uh, and then replies are sent to the whole group or you can change those settings. Categories, obviously we can categorize the group into um, areas where we hope to meet others working in similar topics. And advanced settings. Uh, we can change the primary language, we can delete the group, um, and then we can also plug in another email list service so that Google will archive it for us. Okay, over here at Management Task and Invite yeah. Members, let's um, perhaps look at Members first, up here. And it gives you a little list of the members just there. And then here we can add Invite Members or we can edit the member list permissions. I wanted to point out here that I've made everyone in the group so far a manager and that's in the hope to share some of the load um, because uh, that way anyone can add new members to the group, anyone can come in and change the settings if they like and stuff like that. And so far I've experienced that that doesn't create any problems, conflict of management sort of um, points of view and stuff like that so far. Um, so if you were to click this new person, which is me, drop down this to, we can set it to no email, email, abridged email or digest email. No email means that they have to remember to come to the group's web page to look at the discussion. Also you can set their setting to a regular member, a manager or an owner. And then <coughs> unsubscribe and ban. So the re that's one of the reasons I've got many people in as a, as a manager, is that if we do get somebody drop in or join and turns out to be sending spam all the time, then obviously we can click their account and unsubscribe or even ban that person and you can go the next step further and report them to Google and help them manage their spam. Uh, yes, and so that's I think about it. There's other things to look at, but that's probably the key things to look at. How to accept an invitation, how to join the group, um, what the main features of the group is, and then from a manager point of view, uh, what can be done to control the rate of access, the visibility, and, and um, who can post and all that sort of stuff. Uh, inviting members, let's have a quick look at that. I think it's important that if you have manager status that you build the, uh, the group to as many people as we can. I usually work on about a 10% rule if there are 200 people in the list. Uh, that means that we can expect 20 people to be active. Uh, I'm not saying that the others are not active, it's just that they're probably only reading and not posting to the group and keeping communication going. So if we only have 20 people in our list, then we can only expect perhaps two people being active, which is a bit of a burden on those two people. All right. That's how you invite people. You can invite members by putting their email address and personal message here, or you can add them directly. And if you're adding them directly, you have to remember to set it, the email preference to being one email with act all activity on it, 
one summary email per day, send email for each message and update, or no email. I usually put it to that one by default and encourage the person to go in and set it for themselves. All right, that's it. That's an overview of Google Groups.